Hi, I'm Jason. This is the Pattern to Print channel. And today what I'm going to be talking about is my uh, third video on, on the velocity painting. And this time I'm going to be doing, I guess, what you call a practical print. Um, a few months ago, uh, one of our cats in the middle of the night uh, leaped off our dresser and landed on top of our torture uh, light and proceeded to knock it over and smash it into the wall and it broke the, uh, broke the thing around the light, the lampshade part of it. And so if you ever tried to replace one of these, it's really difficult because it seems that every single uh, lamp has a different size. So pretty much either if I had to either repair it or I needed to, to purchase a new one. So I decided, okay, well, I'll, I'll 3D print one. And, uh, and I thought, well, why don't I do like kind of a pattern on, on, the, on the lampshade the, with the, the velocity painting? Now, usually when you have one of these torchier lamps, the glass isn't clear, it's kind of opaque. So I decided to, even though usually when you do the velocity painting, you do with the translucent filament, I thought, well, why don't I try to do a white, op opaque white, and just see how it turns out. So that's what I did. So uh, first I decided that I would want to do, since the lamp's pretty big, and I was going to need to fill up my whole print bed, that I would do a small scale print. And I also thought, well, um, with the circular, since the lampshade's circular, I thought maybe this would be a good, uh, good time to try to do the Z projection. Um, so you don't have the, when you have like the sides of the lamp, the, since the top is wider than the bottom, you can kind of get a stretching of the stuff at the top compared to the bottom. So I thought, well, the Z projection, that, that, that would work pretty well. Um, I looked at some circle patterns, and then I found out that there's a lot of uh, kaleidoscope patterns up on the internet, and those worked really well for that kind of a circular shape. So I, I did a small scale, and uh, I thought it turned out pretty well. Um, I only printed it one layer thick, and I decided that uh, that, that wasn't going to be thick enough. It was a little too flimsy, and at that, you can almost it's almost like there's holes where it did the velocity painting. Um, I also, uh, and also kind of an interesting thing to note, uh, when you're doing the Z projection, that I had the, the pattern was all the way on the edges and in the center. And the, the velocity painting doesn't work really well when you sort of, um, when you have that part that's smashed down into the build plate. Um, it only kind of works well on parts that are off the build plate. I kind of have another example. Um, before I, made, I went to the Bay Area Maker Fair, I was trying to get a, a big velocity painting done, and I tried to do it with um, with uh, the Van Gogh Starry Night. And uh, basically, I made it too thin, and as it got higher up, it started wobbling, and then it, it didn't work. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just you know, print it flat. And you can kind of see that doing the, the flat projection really it just loses the, um, it really loses the, uh, the effect. Um, so, so yeah, you can't really have it smashed down in the bill plate or it's going to kind of lose its thing. Um, so after I did the small scale, okay, I needed to make it thicker. And I also, when I was looking at the measurements, since the hole in the center of the lamp was nine inches, I really needed the sides to be pretty steep. Uh, to get them high enough to, to sort of uh, to have it do what it needed to do. And I became worried that with it steeper, that really was going to cause a different kind of stretching with the Z projection of the kaleidoscope pattern. And so then I thought, okay, well, wh why don't I do the, um, the uh, sort of a long rectangular and wrap it around. But I decided that that there may have been a way to sort of avoid that uh, kind of V look as you get from a smaller radius to a higher radius at the top. And what I did that was in GIMP, there's a, um, a polar coordinate uh, transformation. And so what that does, is it takes kind of square things and kind of turns it around into a circle. So what I did is I, I took my rectangular pattern and I gave it a lot of um, white space at the, the above. And the reason why I did that is my lampshade has a big hole in the middle. So if I just had it, didn't have that white space, most of the pattern would be in the hole. But by putting the white space above the pattern, when it turned it into polar coordinates, the hole would be empty and the pattern would be where I wanted it to go. Um, so that, was, that, was, uh, that worked out really well. 
And so with that, then I could do the Z projection. And if you notice, it's sort of the, the image is kind of scrunched where the, where the radius is smaller and more spread out where the uh, radius is wider. And so it all kind of cancels out. And I thought it, it turned out pretty well. Um, so then I printed it up and um, I think it turned out, I think it turned out really well. Um, it, just looking on the camera here, you can't really see the pattern really well, but when you take the light behind it, the pattern really kind of uh, shows up. And by doing the polar coordinate uh, transformation, it really minimized that, um, that distortion. And I really liked, liked the effect that it, um, that it came with. So I'm pretty happy with it, and it'll uh, go back on my lamp. And uh, so it's successful. Um, I was able to, uh, to replace the lampshade and uh, keep the lamp. Um, and hopefully from now on the cats will realize that that is not a landing place. Um, so, um, so that's all I have for this episode. Um, if you like the content, please subscribe. Click the clock in whatever the corner I put it in this week. And um, thanks for stopping by and have fun printing.